Hey, welcome back everybody. This lesson is going to cover the distributive property. Now equivalent linear expressions are expressions that have the same value for all values of the variables. Now the distributive property is used when you multiply a factor outside of the parentheses by the expression that is inside the parentheses. Now there's a lot of different applications for the distributive property, but like let's say you have something like this. All right, now that is certainly an example where you could use the distributive property where you can distribute the five into the three, into the two, but doesn't really, a lot of people scratch their heads and go, you know what, isn't it just okay if I add the three and the two? and make five and then just multiply five times five, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, why not just do it that way? I think distributive property is more of a thing when you have more algebra, more of an expression in the parentheses. Let's say instead of three plus two, we have three plus n. Well now in this example, we cannot add three plus n. Those are not like terms. Three plus n does not make three n. It doesn't make anything. You can't add that up. So you have to distribute the five into the three and then you'd have to distribute the five into the n. That's how you'd have to simplify that particular problem. So I would say it's more useful with the algebraic aspects of the math that we're gonna do instead of just doing it like with this. All right, this part of the lesson, I wanna show you some examples here where I show you the algebra and I show you the examples here written down. You know, the algebra is definitely abstract. You know, if you look at the algebra, we have a lot of letters. What do the letters mean? The letters represent numbers, but Right here, when you have an A that is outside the parentheses, that's being distributed into everything that's inside the parentheses. So A times B is AB. A times C is AC. Well, for this particular problem, we're distributing three. So you'll notice there's a three here and there's a three here. So three is being distributed by four. So you put three and four there, three times four. And then three is also being distributed by two. So you got three times two. So we don't necessarily have to work that out. We just have to kind of show what's going on there with the distributive property. Now the distributive property works both ways. Sometimes, most of the time, you'll see the, the factor in front of the expression. And sometimes you'll see the factor after the expression. But when it's right up against the parentheses, that still means multiplication. So in this example right here, we're gonna still distribute two. All right, but we're just gonna go kind of in a different order here. We do three times two, so three times two and then we're gonna do five times two. So all the same things happen just as if the two was right in front of it. In these two particular examples, you're gonna notice that there's a subtraction sign between the terms and the expression. And so we're just gonna kinda of pay attention to the fact that there's a subtraction sign there. So what we have here is the five is being distributed into six. So we have five times six, and this five is being distributed into four. So notice we have a minus here, so five times four. And it's really no different if the four is after, if the factor is after the expression. So we're still gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna distribute the four, so it's gonna be eight times four, and then six times four. Now you notice in all those examples right there, we didn't really solve anything, we didn't really multiply anything out, we we're just kind of writing it out, showing how the distributed property kind of puts everything together. Now right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start breaking it down into simplest form. Now in this particular example right here, we're gonna start applying it. So in this first example, we've got three being distributed into x and three is being distributed into two. Now distributing just means you're multiplying. So three times x and then three times two. So now let's work this out. Three times x is just three x. You just put them together. Three times two, is six. And that's as far as you can go with this problem. Three x plus six does not make nine. Three x plus six is just what it is, three x plus six. All right, in the second example, you'll notice we're distributing a two. So we're gonna do two times r, the first term is r, and then minus two times four. Well, two times r is just two r. Minus two times four is eight. So that's it. 2r minus eight. If you also wanna write it like this, you can. So 2r plus negative eight. Both those answers are perfectly 
fine. Don't get thrown off by the fact that the number that's being distributed is after the parentheses. So in this one, we're going to do n times 8, and we're going to do 6 times 8. So n times 8, don't put n8. That's gross. Put 8n. Always put the coefficient ahead of the variable. And then 6 times 8 is 48. And that's all you can do with this problem. 8n plus 48. But like I said, don't write 8n. That's a really ugly way of writing uh, an algebraic expression or a term. Always write the coefficient ahead of the variable. Now at this part of the lesson, go ahead and go through the Google form and solve the examples, and then we'll move on from there.